and 50. OK, so that's what we're going to do first. So now we're going to, we've talked about then, height, hang time, range. You have the concept. You have the formula. What more could you want? Now let's do these two hard kind of problems, um, uneven uh, trajectories and angles. Mm, yeah, let's do that. So I was trying to think of an uneven trajectory that you're familiar with. And I remember there's some game, I don't know what the point of this game is, where you're like throwing a ping pong ball into a cup. What is it like that? I'm really bad at this game. And I'm also a fairly successful person. So if there's a correlation there, that's kind of <laughs> up to you guys to figure out. OK, whatever. I suck at this game. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick practice problem based on this game, okay? which no one plays under the age of 21 unless it's water pong, is my understanding of the system here. Uneven trajectory. Oh, this horrible shadow. Uneven trajectory problem. So this is this thing right here, uneven. This is why I wrote it down. Uneven trajectory. So what we're going to say is I'm going to throw the pin. These are made up numbers. I don't think they're accurate. I'm going to throw the ball at 3 meters per second at uh, 60 degrees above the horizontal into a cup. And then where to put it? So how far away should it be? OK, so there you go. There's an example of thinking. Now, what are they asking us to solve for? I wrote where to put it because I don't have a lot of room and time to write a nice sentence. But normally, I'd say, how far away should you be from the cup? So you're thinking about like the x direction, right? But you're definitely going to have to rely on, um, you're definitely going to have to rely on uh, x and y. Somebody asked why this is positive. It's because I brought it to the other side. OK, so let me draw it real quick. Here we go. This is like the table. And here's me. And I'm releasing the ball from here, right? And the cup is over here. So suddenly, we see why this is an uneven trajectory, right? I'm releasing from here, and I'm landing here. And there's a difference between the two. So let's say, since we're doing this with numbers, there's a 0 0.4 meter difference, 40 centimeters from the height I release it to the height of the cup, 40 centimeters. And I released it, uh, you know, theta was 60 degrees, and then 3 meters per second, et cetera. OK. Um, so one way to do this, what I want to show you is you could do it with full kinematics. You could just brute force solve this with kinematics by just writing the kinematics equations and solving them. Often you'll end up with having to solve a, a polynomial in time. You'll have like at squared plus bt plus c equals 0. And you can't factor it, and you'll have to use what's that thing called theorem where you have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a over 2, whatever it is. Whatever that thing is. I don't know. It's in your calculator. So you don't want to do that. Or you could. There's nothing wrong with that. But you could also break this into a two-part problem and say, I'm going to think of the even trajectory that occurs here. And then that's just an initial value problem to get into there. Right? You could do that. That actually makes it a little bit easier. Since it breaks it up, the math comes out a little nicer. All right? So let's just do it that way real quick. Let's see. First of all, then, for the even part, I'll call this the even range. Right? And now it's just plug and chug. Now it's easy. Oh, r, because since we derived all the equations, r is 2 times 3 squared times the sine of 60 times the cosine of 60 over 9.8. Right? So we get 0.795 meters. So that's not the answer. That's not how far you need to be. That's to here. OK? But now what we want to do is say, if it ends there, what velocity components does it have? What's it doing? And what's going to make it land here? OK, I kind of drew it too far away. And then how far is it from here to here? That's really the answer we're looking for, right? So what is the motion at x equals uh, r? That's really the question. When it's right here, we know where it is now. We know how high it is, so we need to drop 40 centimeters uh, we know where the origin is for this second part, but what's the motion? How fast is it going? Right. So v x naught. Let's see. V x naught didn't change. Right. In one of these things, it doesn't change. The gravity is down. The x component is the same. Even after it ends the even trajectory and becomes an uneven trajectory, 
it's still going down. So we would say um, it's, you just plug in the numbers and it's, uh, oh, whatever, uh, it's uh, three times the cosine of 60. It's 1.5 meters per second. That's the x component. Right? And then what about y? The y naught, this is for the second part now. This is here, right? So it's got a velocity component that way and a velocity component that way. V x naught now, V y naught here. So V y naught is where, if you just believe me that it's symmetric, you don't have to do a bunch more equations, right? You just say, well, I know it's going to be the opposite that it was here. If it goes through an even symmetric trajectory, this one basically flips over. Whatever velocity it had to get up to that height is the same velocity it'll pick up when it falls back down. Okay? So you could just say then it's negative, and then just say 3 times the sine of 60, which is a negative 2.6 meters per second. Okay? So now you're in pretty good shape. Right? You have an object, you need it to fall 0.4 meters, and you know exactly how fast it's going. It seems like you're in good shape. So you need it to accelerate for a distance, don't you? You have a distance. It's going to accelerate. So the formula is the good old accelerate for a distance formula. Accelerate for a distance. Right? We're not asking you for a time. We're thinking about this distance to go like that. So we're going to use Excel for distance. Okay, that's tricky to remember to do. Here in my notes, I started to do acceleration for a time, right? See, I even made the mistake. And then I didn't even cross it out, okay? Where'd you get 0.4 meters? Yeah, I didn't say it in the problem. The cup, the distance between where my hand was and the top of the cup was 0.4 meters. I didn't write it as a sentence. Okay, acceleration for distance. V final, how fast it's going here, we don't know, right? So that's what we're looking for. How fast does it get up to? V initial, we know is a negative 2.6 squared plus 2 um, uh, times 9.8, negative 9.8, times d, 0.4, like that. See there? And you square that, it becomes positive. So you bring this one over, and everything remains positive. It's OK. And oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, this one becomes positive, this one's negative, you add them together to get the final velocity, and it, uh, it does come out negative because it's down, and you get negative 3.82 meters per second. All right, V final Y. Okay, so we just did that to find out once it drops, how fast is it going in Y now? It's going faster in Y. It's still got the same VX naught. Okay. Why do we do that? Because we need to know why aren't the lights on? <laughs> uh, the reason we did that is now we need to know how long does it take to go from here to here, right? So that's, it fell, so how long is this second part? Well, our final was 3.82. V final minus 3.82 equals our initial was minus 2.6, minus 2.6 plus acceleration 9.8 T. We got this final velocity because that'll help us figure out how long it's in the air for this little part, All right? And if you plug that in, you get 0.125 seconds. T, I'm just gonna call it 0.125 seconds. You gotta be able to follow the notes. If I start making up infinite subscripts, it'll just be confusing. So this was the even, and this is the uneven part. Or this is like the extra part. So 0.125 seconds, why do we get 0.125 seconds? because we're trying to figure out how far it goes this way, right? So now we know, now we know it flew in the x for 0.125 seconds. So the delta x um, is the v x that it's going 1.5 meters per second, 1.5 meters per second times 0.125 seconds. And is that the answer? No. That's how far it went right here. That's this part. Right, and that is, if you work out the numbers later, 0.188 meters. All right, so this is 0.188 meters. Okay, and when you add them together, that's when you get the full answer, 0.983 meters. So you need that cup to be 0.983 meters, okay? I just did that problem in like, eight minutes, 
Okay? I do not expect you to be able to do that problem in eight minutes. If you were given that problem in your homework, like two hours maybe, well, some coffee breaks, go get some boba, cry a little bit, and then you might get it done. I just did it in seven minutes. Not to show off, because we don't have two hours of class time. So if you were like desperately trying, you couldn't really follow it at that fast, that's okay. Right? I don't, you shouldn't be able to do it this fast. But this is the only way I can do problems in class. Okay? So when I burn through a problem in class really fast, I'm just trying to show you the tricks and how to think about it. I'm not expecting you to be able to do it that fast. Okay? So the tricks were, oh my god, it's an uneven trajectory. Let me do the even part first. I did the even part. Now I have the initial conditions for the little extra part, the little drop. And then it was actually pretty tricky. You've got to get the velocity to be able to get the time to be able to get the distance. That's hard, right? But now you could do any uneven trajectory because they're all basically the same. Okay. Let's see. Oh, my God. <laughs> 